I would like to welcome you in this presentation. It's great that a lot of you were there. And uh, I have to say that this house, which was listed like UNESCO monument in 2001, in the same time as uh, Schroeder House here in Utrecht, it was magic that these two Momo houses, modern movement houses, were listed in one year, in fact. Uh, and uh, this house was built in 1930, so it's great that uh, I can welcome you here and to tell you the story, not about the, the restoration work, but uh, as well about the family. The name is Beyond of the Glass Room. <laughs> <laughs> many lives of Together House, so it means that I would like to present you not only the life of the family, but as well the, what happened with the house later on. Because uh, uh, after a lot of research, uh, international restoration campaigns was visible that uh, Villa Together is the most authentic house of uh, Mies van der Rohe in Europe. <coughs> and uh, it probably happens only thanks to this moment that uh, during the communist time, it's the only advantage of communist time that we never had money enough, so that's why that we couldn't rebuild it, rebuild it, rebuild it. So the house was officially touched only once. Uh, so I wanted to start with uh, some romantic uh, picture because the film will be a little bit romantic too, so I wanted to <laughs> shock you at first, in first minutes. Uh, you can see that the house is really changing every year and in every season, in every situation. And uh, I wanted to present you at first the fam life family. It's uh, date from 1930 to 1938, but as well the restoration. Uh, restoration started in 2010 and finished 2012. These pictures are from the hand. It's again non visible. Uh, <laughs> of David uh, Zidlitsky. David Zidlitsky is our famous photograph, so you can see how uh, the exterior and interior are connected and are working together. Uh, on the right side you can see the quote of uh, Greta Tugendat. I have to say that uh, on the picture you can see the two, the most original part of the house, its typical marks, its uh, the column because the holding system of the house is contained from 29 columns and your onyx wall in this moment it is shining so it means that uh, the is it visible a little bit yeah uh, that the, the sun is going through seven centimeter thing onyx desks and it's changing the color so uh, it's necessary a little bit mentioned that it's not only magic uh, that the Tugendat house started to grow up in, uh, in Brno. Uh, Tugendat family was very rich, okay, and they really, really accept the conditions of Miss van der Rohe. But as my colleague, Professor Vladimir Schlapeta, always starting uh, his lecture about the modern movement architecture in Brno, he always will start is starting with a quote, Villa Tugendat is not standing a desert. It has a tradition of modern movement architecture here. For instance, you can see colony of new house uh, after the inspiration of Weissenhof Siedlung and Wroclaw, Wuwa Wroclaw uh, in Brno was built colony. Uh, this is the first functionalistic building. It's for Cafe Zeman designed by uh, Boslav Fuchs in 1924. And even in this example, uh, the glazing windows are sliding, so it's, there is possibility to retract windows, maybe later inspiration for it again, that house. Another example, it's Moravian Bank, it's um, in the main square, a lot of this building was built. Uh, you have to imagine that uh, uh, Czechoslovakia was founded after the First World War, because uh, before that we were the part of Austrian-Hungarian Empire. So a lot of schools, uh, administrative buildings, uh, financial institution and so on was built in 20s and 30s. It was the most famous time from 1918 to 19, uh, sorry, uh, from 1919 to 1939. Uh, so 20 years of excellent architecture in Czechoslovakia. Uh, it was for instance, uh, what was for instance demonstrated by this big project. It's an exhibition fair in Brno. It was built in 1928, like a 10-year celebration of young democratic capitalistic republic. 
and uh, you can see that the level of the architecture was really, really very high. <coughs> the Kindheit House uh, uh, started to be prepared as a project during the years 1928 and 1929. In the same time, uh, in Mies Atelier started uh, started project of Barcelona Pavilion as well as Krefels Villa, Villas, uh, Villa Lange and Villa Esters. Uh, the clients, admissioners uh, of the of this project of this beautiful house, were extremely rich family. We have to say it's Jewish family. They were rich, be especially because the textile industry, cement production, and uh, uh, sugar industry. It is Greta and Fritz to Gendat. Uh, you could see from the street, the f f house is looking very simply. From the garden, it's a completely different view. Uh, the slope is orientated to the south, as, and probably it was the main reason uh, when uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, who was invited by this couple to Berno in September 1928, and because there is a beautiful view to the historical city, he said yes. And as well, he could see the modern movement architecture in Brno, so he was inspired and he was really uh, sure that he can even work with the uh, local uh, crust workers. In the last month of construction of the Tugendat House, uh, Mies van der Rohe invites uh, to the land, to the, to, to, the, to the garden, Philip Johnson. He was in that time a uh, uh, student of history of art. But he was so enthusiastic of the work of Mies and of the European architecture that he started to study architecture as well. And uh, during uh, the exhibition, the world exhibition called International Style, Tugendhat House was evidently the first who was there and even it was in, in the cover of the catalog, this picture. And so this exhibition traveled three years in USA and uh, it's really uh, excellent that from Czechoslovakia uh, four buildings were the part of this international style exhibition. Uh, Hitchcock and Johnson were the authors. You can see that even the construction is not, not, uh, it's, it's not cheap and it's not simple. It's the system of, it's in fact steel or iron house. Uh, it was the mis condition that the steel will be bought in Berlin. Even the entrance, it's not demonstrating uh, the power of the family or it's not looking like the representative seat of the factory or of the, this property, but it's really a private house. Uh, we could see entrance door and entrance hall, which is very small with the original, till now with the original mm -hmm. Italian travel time. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, bedroom of uh, Greta Tugendhat. Uh, this is the bedroom of uh, Fritz to Gendart because entrance hall is in the same way bedroom, uh, bedroom floor. Uh, Mies van der Rohe designed not only the building substance but the whole interior together with the Lille Reich and the garden together with uh, Grete Roder Miller. Uh, the house is not only international in the, in the way of thinking, and in the ideas, in the way of flowing space and so on, but it's international even in the using of material and as well it is international uh, of where the, the Mies van der Rohe and, and companies who work there had to buy uh, this furniture, for instance, uh, furniture, these uh, materials. Uh, in a, a parents' uh, bedrooms, we saw, for instance, wardrobe from Rosewood, from Malaysia, here in a room of a daughter of Hanna Weiss, we can see a Zebrano uh, veneer from Indonesia, and this is uh, this very well-known uh, glass room or living room. This living room has 250 square meters. So you can imagine the size, so it's a big space uh, with the two freestanding walls. The first one is flat onyx wall. Uh, onyx is from Morocco, from Atlas Mountains, and uh, Mies bought it specially for it to get that family in uh, uh, Paris birth. And the second one is the semi-circle wall 
So just now we are looking to the library, which is behind the onyx wall. You can see the bridge table as well as uh, the beautiful library, which is still original in the house. It was restored. It's Makassar Ebony is uh, from uh, Celebes uh, Island from Malaysia. So it's really magic. If you will see another picture, so what happened with the house, it's magic that it survived. Uh, sometimes I'm mentioning that the house has to be woman because it's always looking, even in horrible situation, looking very well in the pictures. And <laughs> as well, it survived a lot of things. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's a pity that you cannot even see the, the authors of the, of the pictures because some of them are uh, pictures from uh, our museum. Our museum have a, one of the biggest archive of uh, Momo uh, sketches, plans and photos in Czech Republic. And uh, this collection was the official part of, of, of collections and this is the beautiful collection which is demonstrating how Tugendats live there. Uh, because even in 1931 in, uh, in the pages of magazine Deform uh, started the discussion if it is really available, uh, not available, possible to live in Tugendat House. It was interesting because you can see the two sons who were born in, in, a, in a house in Beno. It's Ernst and Herbert, 1930, 1933. And in this page is really started to discussion uh, be between Justus Bear and another, uh, another specialist and a special journalist and historian of, of arts. And uh, it was maybe for the first time in the history of architecture that the clients started to fight for, for his architect. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you can really see from this picture that uh, the, they were able to live there. It's shining from, from these pictures. It's on the upper terrace. Yeah, he's a housekeeper. It's, uh, yeah, he's a philosopher, new Kantist, so big personality in this moment. So he, he's in a conservatory, uh, in a main space. This is the situation when the, I told you that there is the second freestanding uh, wall. It's this Makasa Ebony wall. Uh, so it's during the celebration. I mentioned that they were Jewish, but uh, they were not Orthodox Jewish. They, they celebrate normal Christian. Uh, this part, this is Greta Tugendat studying in a Fritz room. <coughs> As well, this is a beautiful, you cannot imagine how helpful these pictures were for us during the restoration because every detail we can found there. As well, the, the children's, both children's are in one uh, Tugendat armchair. And I will go, what happened with the house after the war. A lot of glazing was destroyed by the pressure wave from the bombing of the city center. But it's interesting, but because the two of the windows is possible to completely to open, sliding windows, it worked in that time. Even it was divided on this small, small parts. And the house was used from 1945 uh, about the war history, you will see more. You will see more information about in, in the film. But uh, this is the time from 1945 to 1950 when the house was used like a, a school of rhythm, rhythm, and later on like a ballet school. It's a beautiful. You can see that uh, it was possible only in the moment when uh, uh, the house was. I maybe forgot it to tell you that uh, the Tugendat family lived here only for eight years, from 1930 to 1938. Again, more information you will see in a film. And uh, uh, it was used later on in the 60s, uh, like a rehabilitation center for the children with the spina defects, because children's hospi uh, children hospital is not so far away from, uh, from the house. So you can see that the ch children practice there and as well they uh, had to learn. So this is another beautiful collection of the, of the picture. The, the lady who is standing near to, to Onyx Wall, it is uh, Vice Dean of Faculty of Architecture, as we discovered last time. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is another very interesting collection 
the first colored picture maybe this one is from 1989 when uh, the Prague, Prague Springs was uh, in a so this is the situation how the house looked after the war uh, in a form you will see that uh, it was used in the end of Second World War like a stable for the horses of Red Army. So that's why that uh, the original Deutsche Werke Linoleum was destroyed and later on was secondary done this level of, uh, of uh, Marmoleum. This is a situation in the beginning of, in the end of 70s and in the beginning of 80s. So, uh, till now you can see that from the probably economic reasons, they completely disappeared the part with the glazing in an entrance. Uh, the house wasn't maintained. This picture, it is roof, it's not pavement. And uh, this one, it is uh, the conservatory. So, uh, as well, you can see that the... But uh, it was in horrible situation, but uh, the following activities, uh, did something. Uh, it was a so-called first restoration. It happens during the years 1981 uh, till 1985. Uh, house was restored. It means that, uh, in fact, was saved, but it wasn't used. It, it means that inner equipment wasn't uh, done in original situation, but it was used by the political VIP of the state and of the city like a special VIP hotel together with the a, with a audience hall. So uh, this is uh, Hannah's room with a Romanian TV, I think. And uh, the main, main uh, hall. So uh, it, with the distance of the time, we have to say that probably this restoration really uh, protect the house and probably thanks to this the house survived because there was new roof and the house was temporized but sure it's not uh, original situation it's not uh, going back as well because this function even this happened in, in, a, in a house in 1992 you can see the uh, former prime ministers Mr. Metzger and Mr. Klaus uh, how they are discussing in the garden about the division. And now I will go quickly through the restoration. It started uh, in, in 2010. Uh, I have to say that uh, the, the whole restoration was supported by the European Fund. The final price was about 7 million euros, so it was quite a lot of. But the goal was restored not only the, the building substance but the garden. And, and interiors too, and uh, as well the main, main, main goal was uh, to, uh, to give, to, how to create the, the space and the details back to the situa situation when Tugendhat family lived here. So it means to the moment, to the years 1930 to 1939. You could see that we had a big static troubles uh, especially in, a, in the garden terrace. So this is the special foundation of, of us. So we even did new foundation in a uh, right south corner of the house. For some moments, for some weeks, uh, you can see that the, the column, we have 29 columns. One column really was in the air and we had to do new so-called wells so the special form, uh, eight meters depth, so it wasn't easy. And uh, because it was decided that the house is so authentic and it was really, really touched only once, uh, finally was by TICOM, by uh, committee decided that even we will save all plastering and we will save the wall. So we started to do it like in Renaissance with the alfresco. It was really transferred, the bricks were transferred and uh, later on it was given back to the original situation. It was in the beginning, it is diagonal, the <coughs> cracks announced that really part of the house is going to the garden alone. And uh, finally uh, we even had to do something with the walls in the garden. It's not, in, it's not okay till now, Vessel. Oh. So still, yeah, you have to come back, yeah. Uh, no, it's 
could be the film. And yeah, this is what I talk about. Because we uh, really want to have an international reflection. So that's why I think it was one of the crucial moments in the, uh, in the process of restoration. We found it uh, TICOM, Tugendhat House International Committee. So uh, uh, the honorary chair was Daniela Hama Tugendhat, the youngest daughter of Tugendhat family. Uh, the chair was uh, Ivo Hammer, her husband, and vice chair was Vessel de Jonge. And we collected the, the specialists from the Europe, for instance, uh, here. Uh, you can see the specialists from the Switzerland, uh, Ruggero Tropeano and Artur Riek, uh, Anna Toistos, the chair of Lukomomo International, and, and others. So we had a meeting every quarter of year and we discussed the problematic parts. It wasn't easy sometimes because our budget really depends on the European role. If somebody of you met this process, it's really not easy. Uh, for instance, just now we are looking to the, the hole where we found uh, the original base of, uh, of the column. Yeah, thank you. And we had a lot of discussion and sometimes it's really everybody was wet, is it? So I wanted to comment the, the, the uh, floors. It is the it's a basement, the first floor, uh, second floor. So you can see here the, this is the onyx wall, uh, semicircle wall, and uh, this is the top floor with the uh, parent section and the children's section. I'm sorry, I probably have no time to to continue. So this is the foundation. Uh, sections, facades with the cracks, and uh, I will go very quickly through this project because uh, the decision was that everything what was secondary done have to disappear. Only some special marks we let there, like a demonstration of uh, 80s, for instance. Uh, because we moved the flooring, the, the secondary done concrete, we could look to the uh, to the inner part of the columns. You can see here, it's, it's really beautiful detail. You can see a special bayonet lock. So it was really able to see it uh, only in this moment, in this year from 1910 to 12. This is example that we really found uh, the original uh, Deutsche Werke Linoleum. This is interesting because we, it was a surprise for us because I, I worked in Heritage Institute. I have some experience with the technologic things, but this material, it's, uh, it's not clay, but it's a uh, peat, peat, is it right word? Peat desk, so it's typical more for Bauhaus architecture than in for, for uh, Middle Europe architecture. So we found a lot of another things because the craft workers uh, in the 80s didn't do their work so well. So thanks to this situation, we found the original uh, Czechoslovakian uh, ceramic pieces. Even during, during the drainage works, we found the original glazing. Maybe later on, if you, there will be discussion, the vessel was our specialist of, of uh, glazing. So it was a very interesting moment. It was, I said, second Christmas day for us when we found it, because we were really sure uh, what's happened there. As well, we had a troubles with the stone, because our original stone, Italian travertine, is in Poblazio. So again, our documentation archive helped us a lot of, and the, uh, the original of Travertine was uh, only, only cleaned, we only cleaned, it, it was ba basic maintenance and the rest was, uh, was uh, uh, bought in the same uh, location as the original one, glazing again. It was incredible process of the works. It was extremely expensive as well. We discussed even about the quality, if it was matte glass or opaque glass and so on and so on. So again, it's a lot of thanks to TICOM that it survived. And sure, the house is standing on the, on the slope. You will see in a film how uh, complicated it was for us to move all this material above the roof. So it's looking like a circus, a little bit, <laughs> performance, but it, it's really uh, incredible collaboration of uh, a lot of companies. 
because in a house, finally, where it's not only bricklayers but a lot of uh, conservators, uh, finally it was 46 companies who worked there during these two years. So again, uh, we can see here foundation of the of the table, round table. This is climatization, for instance, uh, column and uh, the typical Walter Gropius uh, handles because Mies used these handles. This detail door stopper, it's design of Mies van der Rohe. As well as climatization because the house has uh, four incredible technical aspect. It's this the system of the columns I told you. Uh, climatization, it's here with the filters, wooden filters and oil filters, as well uh, as electric lowering of the window. And you can see that restorers were extremely uh, successful in the restoring of the semicircle wall because we thought that it disappeared, but we found it, it uh, during the restoration in a faculty of, uh, of law, former uh, Gestapo uh, seat, and it was again restored and moved back to the house. So very quick demonstration how finally furniture in every room uh, was restored or at. This is maybe I wanted, because the hands, I wanted to mention this is the most uh, loved piece of uh, Philip Johnson. It is uh, armchair named Brno, the same as our city. So it, it was interesting in the uh, USA when I was there, everybody know that Brno is a chair and nobody <laughs> know that, uh, that Brno is a city, so it was great. So this, is, this was the only uh, armchair who was bought by, by Philip Johnson and he had it till the end of his days in his flat and later on he gave it to MoMA. So again, a view of the collection of the, this is the hall for instance with a Stuttgart chair. This is the, yeah, uh, Greta to get that uh, room as well as this one and another but no chair, but in a flat construction and with a uh, red leather. And another collection, this is, uh, maybe I will not comment it, but you can see that really we did it in a, we restored, it was the goal that we will restore all original things and the copies will look like uh, original one. It means that for instance, the, the beds and uh, another armchair is well fulfilled by original way, it means with the horse hair, by the horse hair and the sea grass and so on. And this is the last pictures are uh, from this collection, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> are from, from, from uh, the glass room, so library and uh, bridge table as well as the armchairs near to onyx wall and near to glass house. And uh, final collection I have to mention, mm. this is the laundry, because we opened in the house the tours, not only in, in the part which was used by the Tugendat family, but we thought that for professionals we have to uh, show another part with the technical equipment. And I thought that 20% will want the standard part and the rest technical part. 95% is asking for technical. It means that standard plus, uh, plus uh, another uh, equipment. And quickly, this is, uh, we reopened, the house was reopened for the public in uh, uh, March uh, to last year. So uh, even in a part which was used for the, for the service people, there are new interventions, so when in the part when we didn't have uh, material, archive material enough, we uh, started to give it in a new way, new form. Uh, this is very popular as well as historical film, uh, as well, <coughs> well as lectures or star watching, it is popular too. Because we are respecting that uh, we have uh, eight or ten tours per day, but during the evening the people love to go back and to enjoy the similar program as we have today. And uh, as well the visitor center, I wanted to in this picture I wanted to show you this man, this man. 
It is a grandson of uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. It's uh, Der Glohan. I was extremely proud that he visited the house this springs because he is in this moment responsible for restoration of uh, Neues Gallery and he wanted to be inspired by the, our results and it was great because he welcomed us to Mies Club, he wrote in our book of memory. Uh, this is for instance, uh, oh, uh, Bettina Lembruck, we are just now fighting because we are still missing the torso of uh, Wilhelm Lembruck. So she invited us last last uh, week, as well as Eva Irichna, it's probably our most, maybe you know the name of her, she's living uh, in uh, Great Britain, it's our most successful architect, Eva Irichna maybe, you, yeah, not Irichna, but Irichna, yeah, you know. So, and this is the last collection. It's uh, something like invitation to the house who haven't been there. Uh, I have to say that it's necessary to, to make a reservation in advance because in this moment the house is for another uh, four months sold out, all tickets. As we had 45,000 visitors last year. And this is the last picture and the last view to the historical present. So, Thank you for your attention.